I'm going to tell you the story of how a duck farmer started a world championship winning Formula One team. This is a rags to riches story peppered with a little sprinkle of taurine. In the late 1920s, the son of Chinese immigrants was born in PT, North Thailand. His name was Charlio Uvedra, and he worked with his parents on their small farm which sold fruit and ducks. But Charlio was ambitious, moving to the big lights of Bangkok at an early age. He struggled at first, working several jobs from bus driver to a salesman for a pharmaceutical company. It was this knowledge which was the beginning of his success. With a small amount of money, Charlio started his own company named TCP, where he sold antibiotics and cosmetics. The company grew steadily, which allowed Charlio to explore further opportunities. One of these was an energy drink, which he hoped would compete against the current market leader, Lipovitan. Energy drinks were popular in Thailand and were targeted at farm workers who needed a pick-me-up to help them get through their day. At the time, these energy drinks were only sold in pharmacies and they weren't really thought of as being drunk for pleasure. It was all about functionality. After some testing, in 1975, Charlio's energy drink was launched. He called it Creating Dang. The drink's popularity aligned with the migration of people from rural Thailand to the growing industrial cities. The drink found a new market of truckers, taxi drivers, factory and construction workers, and was sold as a stimulant to improve speed, endurance, and concentration. Charlie was sponsored events of his favorite sport, Thai boxing. With this and the changes in Thai culture, his drink quickly became the most popular energy drink in Thailand. Creating Dang was Thai for Red Bull, and its logo with the two red bulls and the sun represented power, perseverance, and energy. In 1980, the drink moved beyond Thailand and was being sold internationally. And this is where our story might have ended if it wasn't for an Austrian, Dietrich Mateschitz, who was on a business trip to Thailand in 1982. Dietrich was a sales and marketing executive who sold toothpaste and shampoo. He flew regularly and bought a bottle of Creating Dang while in Thailand. He was amazed at how well it fixed his jet lag. A few months later, he found himself back in Asia, this time in Hong Kong. He was reading an article about Lipovitan, which identified the energy drink as one of Japan's biggest taxpayers. This opened Dietrich's eyes as to just how big a market energy drinks were. And within a few days, Dietrich had quit his job and met with Charlio. They both agreed to put in $500,000 to develop an energy drink for the global market. Under the name of Red Bull, the pair began testing the drink with European customers. But there was a problem. The drink didn't go down well. They were told by the experts that the drink was unlikely to be successful and they should stop the enterprise. Undeterred, after three years of product development, Red Bull was launched in Austria. In that time, the drink's flavor had been adjusted, it had been carbonated, and the can's shape and design was also changed. A year later, Red Bull sold over 1.2 million boxes of the drink. The success of Red Bull followed a familiar path when it came to marketing. Just like Charlio, Dietrich targeted non-mainstream sports to align Red Bull with. Dietrich was an extreme sports fan, and as such, Red Bull started sponsoring mountain biking, climbing, and snowboarding. This approach moved the brand from one that was more than just an energy drink. It became a brand that explored the very boundaries of adrenaline, adventure, and energy. Red Bull now sells in over 170 countries, with over 7.9 billion cans sold every year. And they have transformed the theory of marketing practice. Red Bull has gone on to build their own World Championship winning Formula One team. They own football teams across the world and continue to support a number of extreme sports through event and athlete sponsorship. They've even sponsored a man to parachute from the edge of space back down to earth. So what can we learn from Red Bull? Well, being different helps you stand out. This was a new type of drink product, both in terms of taste, effect, and design. Secondly, stay the course but work with customers to make your product as good as it can be. I hope you've enjoyed this fable. Do give us a like and a comment, and do consider subscribing. We post weekly about brand, digital, design thinking, and design. Thanks again, and see you in the next one.